Hey there, my name is James Lee. Welcome to my channel 5149 where I talk business, politics, and society. And today we're gonna to be talking about taxes. That's right, it's tax season and I did mine for free. Free? Free? Free. <laughs> That's right. TurboTax Free Edition is free. Free, 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 free. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I did not do it for free. That commercial was a big old lie. Everything looks fantastic when you pull up the Intuit TurboTax website. Free, zero dollars. Fed, zero dollars. State, zero dollars to file. File your own taxes. Start for free. Tax experts can help. Claudel, 23 years of experience. Also start for free. We do your taxes for you. Also free. I think you guys know where I'm headed with this because there's no way it's all free. This is from the LA Times last week. In a lawsuit filed Monday in federal court in San Jose, the FTC alleges that Intuit, the maker of the industry-leading tax software program TurboTax, has systematically misled consumers into believing that they could prepare and file their taxes for free. Quote, TurboTax is bombarding consumers with ads for free tax filing services and then hitting them with charges when it's time to file, said Samuel Levine, director of the FTC's Bureau of Consumer Protection. What? It seems so out of character for Intuit to do something like that. No, I'm just kidding. In March of 2015, the Washington Post and computer reporter Brian Krebs reported that two former employees alleged that Intuit knowingly allowed fraudulent returns to be processed on a massive scale as part of a revenue boosting scheme. Okay, so maybe not out of character, public companies engaging in shady business practices to juice profits. I would say that's more the norm than the exception. You can kind of think of it as a sliding scale of shadiness from, oh, that's messed up to, yeah, that's very, very illegal. Their response, Intuit General Counsel Carrie McLean called the FTC's allegation, quote, simply not credible. She said, far from steering taxpayers away from free tax preparation offerings, our free advertising campaigns have led to more Americans filing their taxes for free than ever before. Mm, yes, a for-profit company spending millions on ad campaigns every year promoting its free product because they just want to help Americans file their taxes out of the goodness of their hearts. Does that sound right to you? Well, here is the actual data. The Office of the Inspector General for Tax Administration, which found after a 2020 audit that only 2.5 million of the 104 million taxpayers eligible for free filing through the program actually used it in the prior tax year. So that's only about 2% or so. Now, some might argue that TurboTax's business model is no different than any other freemium model. Give people a little bit of, you know, a little taste, and then boom, hit them with the bill once they're in deep. But I think this is a little different. You put in all your information, and then you realize, oh, I have to claim the child dependent tax credit. I'm not free anymore. That's gonna be 40 bucks if you wanna continue. Down from 60, though. Anyway, right? N nothing wrong with making money in America's free market environment. We do business, you do business, let the best product or service win. And it looks like Intuit is winning. According to Bloomberg's second measure, TurboTax owns more than 70% of the tax prep services market based on total sales. Now that's what you call dominating the market, but the market is almost never free. Is it? This is from ProPublica. For more than 20 years, Intuit has waged a sophisticated, sometimes covert war to prevent the government from making tax filing simple and free for most citizens, according to internal company and IRS documents and interviews with insiders. The company unleashed a battalion of lobbyists and hired top officials from the agencies that regulates it. From the beginning, Intuit recognized that its success depended on two parallel missions stoking innovation in Silicon Valley while stifling it in Washington. Indeed, employees ruefully joke that the company's motto should actually be compromise without integrity. Mm, that is dark, but it also proves another point that I make pretty often, which is that people who work for public companies aren't necessarily bad people. They do the things they do because 
they are incentivized to do so. And if they go against the grain, there will undoubtedly be someone else willing to carry out the task and then they're out of a job. Internal presentations lay out company tactics for fighting encroachment into its catch-all term for any government initiative to make filing taxes easier, such as creating a free government filing system or pre-filing people's returns with payroll or other data the IRS already has. When I say government encroachment, that does sound like something sinister, it has a sinister ring to it, but unlike my video last week where we discussed central bank digital currencies, this is actually an instance of the government trying to do something for the people. And Intuit will openly admit that they're actively working against this. If you go and read the company's annual or quarterly filings with the SEC, you'll see a, a risk section where a company will lay out risks that could impact their profitability. Always an interesting read if you're into that kind of thing. Here's what Intuit had to say in their latest filing, quote, government-funded services that curtail or eliminate the role of taxpayers in preparing their own taxes could potentially have material and adverse revenue implications. You see, in many instances, the interests of the people are often at odds with corporate interests. The centerpiece of Intuit's anti-encroachment strategy has been the free file program hatched 17 years ago in a moment of crisis for the company. Under the terms of an agreement with the federal government, Intuit and other commercial tax prep companies promised to provide free online filing to tens of millions of lower income taxpayers. In exchange, the IRS pledged not to create a government run system. You don't want to do this tedious work, right IRS? You got enough on your plate. Let us professionals handle it. No worries. So in 2003, a consortium of tax prep services, including TurboTax, launched the free file program but within a couple years seized the offering as a competitive threat to their core business and slowly but surely began to dismantle it through a massive lobbying effort which worked to limit who was eligible to use the service. And then in 2007, TurboTax launched its free edition service that we now know not to be so free to compete with free file to the point that we only see about 2% of electronically filed individual tax returns done via the government sponsored free file program. Free edition, free file, all very confusing. I would actually highly recommend folks read the lengthy investigative ProPublica piece that I've been citing, which I will link in the description below. But just to give a bit of a flavor of the type of dubious tactics Intuit employed, stuff like purposely hiding their free file service from Google search, and then instead promoting their free edition service to confuse the consumer, or even going as far as suggesting that other tax companies should collude with them to decrease the number of free services offered to the market. Wild stuff, like I said, definitely worth giving it a read. In June of 2021, in a blog post titled, Accelerating Technology Innovation to Better Help Consumers Solve Their Most Pressing Financial Problems, Intuit announced that they were withdrawing from the IRS free file program, writing, quote, we are committed to helping our customers solve their biggest financial challenges and that means we need to focus on helping them not only get their biggest refund, but beyond tax preparation so they can increase savings, increase income, pay down debt, and have faster access to their money. We can help more customers get access to their refunds faster at no cost, to tap into expert resources at will, to choose to use their own data to better budget, save, and invest, all of which we cannot effectively do as part of the free file program. I don't know if I've ever read so much BS in a span of about two sentences. Well, I don't know about ever, but that was a lot. What they actually mean is that the free file program doesn't allow them to gouge as much uh, as they would like from the consumer, and they can do that more effectively with their free edition service, which, like we just covered, is not really free at all. Interestingly, the New York Times claims TurboTax Free Edition is, quote, the most sophisticated, accurate, and straightforward tool for the job. Hmm, they don't have any financial arrangements with the products they recommend, do they? <laughs> now, perhaps a silver lining with the power of social media, there is no shortage of people warning others on platforms like TikTok about TurboTax's bait and switch tactics. If you use TurboTax, be careful, let me tell you why. If you're planning to file your taxes this year with TurboTax, watch this TikTok first. If you have not filed your taxes, do not use TurboTax. Do not, do not, do not, and here's why. Filing my taxes on TurboTax, and here's what happened. Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. 
So what can we as consumers do? Well, like I mentioned previously, there is currently an ongoing FTC lawsuit against Intuit, but the key, as with so many other issues, is that we need to disassociate money from politics because the, the US government legislates via legal bribes. As I think that's the only way I could put it. You know, we've legalized what would otherwise be criminal activity in many other democratic countries. I can't beat around the bush on this one. So just know that when you read about someone like Ted Cruz pitching to simplify the tax system, let's let everyone fill out their taxes on a postcard, this kind of deal. Just know that he's only saying that because it's a very popular stance, but he has absolutely no intention of following through, especially considering the fact that Intuit spent over $3 million on lobbying Congress in just 2021 alone. Case in point here is what Joe Bankman, a Stanford law professor and an advocate for free tax filing services had to say when he worked on getting a pilot off the ground. Quote, when I went to California to try to fight it, I thought, well, there's only 120 legislators. I'll talk to them all one-on-one, -on -one, Bankman said. I found that in order to do it, I had to hire a lobbyist because I just couldn't handle the details or get the meetings. In Congress, when I went there, now there's 500 plus, and what I found everywhere I went is that Intuit had already preceded me. They'd already met every representative I was going to meet. So as we head from tax season to election season, question every candidate. Do you condone or even participate in a crime syndicate, legions of lobbyists from every industry looking to write and rewrite rules that sacrifice the well-being of the American public in the name of corporate profit? Anyway, those are my thoughts for the week. Let me know what you think. And if you're watching from another country, please chime in about your experience with doing taxes. I'm sure many of us would love to hear a different perspective from a different system. Uh, if you've still yet to do your taxes, it's coming down the wire here. Um, but if you make less than $73,000 a year, I'll link below the IRS website where it will recommend services that you can actually use to file your taxes for free. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to help support my work, uh, all I ask is that you please do take a second to click on that like button, share this video uh, with other people, subscribe, and perhaps even hit that notification bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. As always, thank you so much for your time. See you next week.